When I was in my 20s, I was a fat, lazy, directionless, pretty much just going nowhere uh, type of individual. And now I'm in my 40s. Uh, you could say I grew up a little bit. <laughs> right now, I am working towards something that I really enjoy. I'm doing these YouTube videos. I'm talking to you. I'm in the best shape of my life and I feel like I'm still improving. Now, I talked all about my journey in a previous video uh, that you can uh, see pretty much like somewhere in the, the show notes. But one thing that I want to say is that I can barely recognize the person I was at 20 years old. And that guy is just so devolved from where I am at this very moment. So in this video, I want to show you the top five lessons that I've learned from being a former fat boy. And if you're watching this and you want to get in shape in 2023, then I would heed these lessons uh, from someone who's actually been there before and someone who's actually had to struggle mightily to get to where he is right now. I promise that it's not going to take 20 years to <laughs> change your body and, and get to where I am. But what I will say is, is that you know, prepare for the long road instead of trying to find the quick fixes and everything that you can do to try to get in shape as fast as possible because most of those are complete bullshit. So here are the five lessons that I've learned from being a former fat boy. So number one, your physical health affects your mental health. So back when I was in my 20s, I was eating junk food, playing video games, I wasn't moving whatsoever, and I was binge drinking with my friends. And if there's anything that you know about eating shit food, about not moving, and about alcohol, is that it has a tremendous effect on your brain. We are now learning the effect that food has on your mood. We are now learning the effect that exercise has on your body and brain. And if you want to see some uh, amazing talks on this, uh, Wendy Suzuki has a talk on TED Talks about how exercise affects your brain. And also there is another TED Talk that I would highly recommend to watch, which is called The Surprising Effect That Food Has On Our Mental Health. And what you have to understand is that the way in which you exercise or the way in which you move your body or even if you don't move your body, this has a tremendous effect on how well your brain works. If you eat a diet full of fast foods, junk foods, if you're eating or consuming processed sugars on a regular basis, then that is going to dictate how you feel, how you think and your amount of energy, which dictates how you feel and how you think. It's not even about how your body looks. It's about what you are doing to your body that makes the biggest difference. So yes, now that I'm 40 years old, I've gotten wiser maybe. So I'm eating steak and eggs every single day. I'm eating vegetables, nutrient dense foods. I'm uh, taking care of my body in the gym. I'm working out almost on a daily basis. I'm walking about eight to 10 K steps. I'm sleeping at least eight hours a night. I'm tracking all this stuff. I'm using a sleep tracker to track this stuff. And I do this because I know the effect that it's gonna have when I jump in front of a video like this and I talk to people like you. I know the effect it's gonna have when I react to my family and when I react to my two and a half year old daughter, Koa. I know what type of person that I'll become if I don't do these things on a regular basis. And again, I don't wanna become that person ever again for the rest of my life. And that is why I put so much effort towards the health side of my life. So number two is going to be, you can't out exercise a crap diet. So when I started to get into fitness, I wanted to do all the workouts that would help me burn as much fat as humanly possible. I would do hit sessions. I would do circuit training. I would torture my body inside of a gym for about one hour to one and a half hours, working out as hard as I possibly could. And while maybe it moved the needle just a little bit, I actually got way more benefit from controlling the foods and the drinks that I put into my mouth. And I learned this from a mentor a long time ago. And my mentor told me, he said that it's a lot easier to not eat 100 calories than it is to try to burn 100 calories. And everything that we know about uh, exercise and its effect on how many calories we burn 
we know that it is like trying to empty out a pool with a little tablespoon. It doesn't really move the needle that much or as much as we think it does. Those calorie trackers that you see on like the treadmills that you see on like the Apple watches and whatever, those have actually been proven to be quite bullshit. I would not trust those whatsoever. So even my aura ring, my aura ring says like I burned, you know, a thousand calories doing like a specific type of exercise. Well, guess what? If I tried to eat a thousand calories more to just fill that portion, I'm going to gain weight. It has nothing to do with the amount of exercise I did. You can't exercise a shit diet. You just can't. You want to focus in on the thing that matters most, like what we call the 80-20 of uh, losing weight and getting in shape when it comes to getting lean, which is always going to be your diet. It's always going to be the foods that you put into your mouth. And it's very easy to get caught up in this whole flexible dieting things that people are talking about. They're like, oh, I can eat it like a Snickers bar every single day and like get myself in shape. I can eat a Big Mac every single day and get myself in shape. Well, you know, that is actually true because calories matter, right? But what they don't say and what they fail to point out to you is the fact that even though you eat those foods and yes, you can get in shape and yes, maybe it makes your diet a little bit more flexible what they don't tell you is that these foods were made to be addictive and that goes on to my next point number three is that your taste buds are being hijacked as fuck okay so when you eat let's just say fake foods and when I say fake foods obviously there's no such thing as fake foods but when I say fake foods these are foods that are created inside of laboratories by scientists and food companies who literally do whatever they can to make them more addictive when you eat these types of foods what we call processed foods what happens as a result is is that you lose taste for real foods I remember when I was eating Big Macs and I was eating all sorts of like junk food like I would actually be able to sit down with an entire bag of ketchup potato chips and I would just be able to crush that while I was playing video games. And now it actually makes me realize that I love the taste of steak and salmon now. Back then, I would not even look at steak or salmon with a glitter of an eye. I would not even look at it like I look at it right now. Like I look forward to eating steak and salmon. And the reason was is because my taste buds were primed to eat foods like chips, chocolates, candies, processed sugars. So when I started to gravitate towards eating real foods, I actually said what most people said or say when you know you eat quote unquote real foods, which is like, oh, this shit's boring, right? This, this is actually just like boring type of food. It's not boring. It actually is the fact that your taste buds are hijacked. What we need to do in order to get ourselves in shape is retrain our taste buds. We need to retrain our the way in which we taste and the pleasures that we get out of the foods that we eat from real sources. And I say single ingredient, nutrient dense sources. So what exactly does this mean? It means that when you eat a specific type of food, it only contains one ingredient. Like a chicken, you're only getting chicken. A salmon, you're only getting salmon. You're not getting maltodextrin in there. You're not getting like any sorts of like fillers in there. You're literally getting only one ingredient. There's only one ingredient in broccoli. It's broccoli. <laughs> And you want to opt for single ingredient, nutrient dense foods, foods that contain the most micronutrients possible, because as we said in the previous, in the very first point, food affects your mood and the more micronutrients that you eat, that you consume through your foods, the more that it's going to make you feel better, the more that your brain is going to work better. And there's something that I want to point out as well is that it's not all about just like eating single ingredient, nutrient dense foods. I drink protein shakes. There's always caveats to every single point that I make. But what you want to do is you want to take the generalities and understand that these have probably 80%, 90% truth to them. So again, there are caveats. Like I drink protein shakes because it helps me fill my protein needs. I take greens powder because it allows me to have just insurance just in case I'm not getting specific types of nutrients. I do these things and I take supplements as well. It does not mean that those things are going to be about 90% of what I do. 90% of what I do is eating single ingredient, nutrient dense foods, eating high protein, eating lots of meats, things of that nature. So we have to retrain our taste buds and we want to do so by eating quote unquote real food. So number four, your identity has to change. You cannot just set a goal of losing weight, getting in shape. You have 
to become the goal. So as you're doing all these actions, you know, as you are eating single ingredient nutrient dense foods, as you are exercising, as you are getting the right amount of sleep, it goes from being the type of person that says that, okay, well, you know, I have to do these things and to get, you know, to lose some weight, I have to do these things to get more energy, I have to do these things to whatever. You have to go from that to becoming a person who does those things, who where those things are like a religion to him. And I don't want to just sugarcoat it for you. You have to change your identity. I talk about the former fat boy a lot and talk about the fact that this guy actually still has like a little sliver of uh, space inside of me. Sometimes he comes out, sometimes I slip up, I'm not perfect. And one thing that you have to understand is that the person that you were at the current shape that you are, especially if you're trying to change and get to like a new level, that person has to either get compartmentalized or he has to die. He has to not be there anymore or she has to not be there anymore. We have to make sure that that person that we're willing to let go of that particular type of person in order to make way for a new identity. And there are so many things that I had to do to change my identity. Some of them are, you know, weird in a sense in terms of like what people would consider to be normal by societal standards. Like lots of people talk shit about affirmations, but I used affirmations to change my thoughts, to change the way in which I talk to myself. I used visualization to see myself doing the habits over and over and over and becoming the person that I wanted to become. I wrote down my goal like every single fucking day, like just to change the ideas inside of a, my, my mind because like if there's anything that we know, it's like your feelings create your thoughts, which create your beliefs, which create your, uh, your actions. I think that's the way it goes. Like, don't quote me on that. But what we think about on a regular basis is who we are to become. And if we want to become a different type of person, then we actually have to identify with new thoughts, new ways of thinking. So you cannot bring the old you with you to the new place that you want to go to the new evolution that you want to create. That person has to get put away. And it does. And again, like, like I said before, there's still a little sliver of like that fat boy in me that's like still inside of me. And it comes out every now and then if I fuck up, if I slip up and that's cool, that's okay. But the main thing is, is that the other part of me takes over and he's like, all right, well, let's get back. Let's recommit. You know, you made a mistake. That's okay. Let's get back to what we were doing before. And you literally, your identity has to change as you are evolving yourself. There is just no way around it. And the last part is going to be that Rome was not built in a day and it was not destroyed either in a day it took time one thing that we have to realize is that getting ourselves in shape is going to take some time are you going to have to wait until like 20 years <laughs> into the future to like change your body or whatever the fuck it is no you don't have to do that but what are most people doing right now most people are giving themselves like a six week challenge to drop the whatever amount of weight that they're trying to drop that they've taken the last two or three years or even five years or ten years to put on their bodies they are literally searching for the shortcuts they're searching for the fads they're searching for the quick fixes and if there's anything that i know from building businesses to building my body to fixing my money it is the fact that you have to play the long game you you cannot take these shortcut angles like you have to bear down on the fundamentals and that stuff takes time changing your identity it takes time and if you're not giving yourself enough time to do this you're gonna feel rushed you're gonna feel like you need to rush the entire process you're gonna feel like things aren't moving fast enough and then when you get impatient what happens you end up making and reacting in ways that are just going to fuck up the long term for you so how long do you, i think or do i believe it takes to get in shape so i have a little bit of a system it takes one day one day just to get started. It takes seven days to gain momentum. It takes about 21 days for you to start to see a groove and for a habit to get started. It takes about 90 days for a lifestyle to just start budding. It takes about six months for you to see momentum in that lifestyle, to see momentum in the habits that you're creating. And it takes, I'm gonna, let me just be honest, it takes about 
one to two years, I, I'm going to say two years in order for true identity change to happen. And this reminds me of when I first got into social media uh, back in 2020. I know this has nothing to do with the body, but bear with me. When I was getting started in social media, what was happening was is that I was creating on Twitter and then I committed to myself of two things, just show up and do the work. If I just show up and do the work, then good things are going to happen. And what that meant to me was showing up every single day, creating every single day. I created, I think it was like anywhere between eight to 13 tweets a day. And I just published them every single freaking day. I spent like hours on that platform trying to grow. And even when I hit like, you know, 5,000 followers, I was just like, that was like within, I think it was like even within a month, I was just like, holy crap, this is awesome. Okay, show up and do the work. When I hit 10K, Super awesome. Okay, well, show up and do the work. 30K, 75K, 100K. Even now I'm at 358,000 people that are listening to the, the words that are coming out of my mouth. What we have to understand is that it is just about showing up every single day. Now, two years later, here I am. I'm creating for social media. I'm creating for Twitter. I'm creating for LinkedIn. I'm creating for Instagram. I'm creating for you who are listening to, who are watch, who is watching this right now. Doing this video is a is starting to become a weekly occurrence for me, and I feel like I'm getting better at it. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. You let me know in the comments, okay? But I am coming here and I'm showing up to the arena and I'm doing it every single freaking day. And then this is actually changing my identity. This, all these little actions, all these little times that I show up, this is what's changing my identity to uh, being someone that has to do it, to someone that feels like I, if I don't create today, I feel like shit. You know, I feel like crap. That's where we want to get to. It's kind of like, you know, if you don't brush your teeth for one day, and you miss that one day, the next day you wake up, you feel you feel horrible, you feel disgusting. At least that's me. I don't know, there's some people with disgusting teeth out there, but anyways. So Rome was not built in a day and you have to give yourself time not only to implement these actions, to see results, but also to change your identity because that is the secret. That's the main thing that we are after. So let me bring it all together here. So I figured it out. This stuff is not going to take you two decades or anything like that. It's not going to take you 20 years, but you have to give yourself time to implement this stuff. And when you do, I promise you, you will see not only changes in terms of your body. I'll tell you right now, like when I work with clients, I have seen clients increase their income, find love completely, just transform their lives from every single aspect because of the fact that they transform their body. And it's not because they got in shape. It's not because of anything. It's because of the actions that they took. Like when you exercise, when you eat well, when you uh, start living a, he a healthy lifestyle, it changes your brain. It literally changes the way in which you perceive yourself. It changes the way in which you approach the world. It changes your energy levels. It changes your confidence. It just amplifies everything. I think it's like the number one meta thing that, that improves every single area of your life as a result of doing it. And I have seen so many people just transform their lives as a result of getting this area of their life handled. And I have a philosophy behind this because it's like, it becomes something that they worry about every single day to something that becomes a conduit to creating a better life. So please learn the lessons that I've learned uh, throughout the entire you know years that I've been doing this. Again, it takes a smart man to learn from his own lessons. It takes a wise man to learn from the lessons of others and heed these lessons and I hope that this uh, video gave you enough value and uh, taught you enough that you will actually take your health in your own hands and, and do something about it. Thanks for watching the video. And yeah, if you uh, really got value out of this, please you know, like and subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. I, I'm really just gonna show up, keep on showing up every single day and just try to do whatever I can to make you a better human being. So if that's cool with you, then like and subscribe to the video and all that kind of stuff. And uh, if you actually want to learn more about uh, the system that I've created after 20 years of working with clients and doing this on myself, then the link is in the description below somewhere. It's called the High Performance Video Course. And it's literally like the culmination of two decades of just learning about this kind of stuff that's compiled into like a 30, 45 minute video. So anyways, uh, hope you got value out of this and I will see you on the next one. Take care and peace.